just skin and bone. I mean, completely frail, gaunt. It was just as if they had been left to their fate. It was just desperation. We had heard from our Rohingya contacts that there were people trapped on a beach in Myanmar. It sounded almost um, fanciful, even though they were absolutely confident that there were people trapped there. Because no one had seen them, we didn't know for sure. They needed to go there independently because no one's allowed to reach that place, and we wanted to do that to see for ourselves uh, as what is happening to these people. The question was always getting the access to get in. You know, it was almost impossible. I mean, you know, Burma, Myanmar, whatever was, and has been a closed country for, for, for decades, you know, so, so physically getting in there was almost impossible. Almost as soon as we set off, one of the crew was bailing water out of the bottom. I looked down, and the whole of the bottom was filled with several inches of water. I mean, geez, what, what, what is this? Martin doesn't do very well on, on boats. I'm not a great swimmer personally. I'm also the sort of person that has been seasick in a harbour, in a pedalo, so getting into a boat and getting on the sea it's actually one of my big fears of, of actually drowning. It was absolutely pitch black. You couldn't see anything till the moon rose and then there was a little bit light on the sea. This journey is expected to take about three, three and a half hours because they're having to find more and more different routes in order to get to the other side. Many of these people have relatives over there. It was evading the Bangladeshi Coast Guard, evading the Myanmar authorities and their Coast Guard, landing safely and evading the Myanmar troops, and then doing it all back again. Several things sort of went through my head straight away. I thought, well, that's going to mean we can land because the Myanmar soldiers wouldn't be flashing us in and trying to guide us in. And then secondly, I thought, there's obviously people there. We have to get off. Yeah. Oi, 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 oi. I don't, I don't want... No, 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 it's OK. Just give me a hand. Thank you. Well, you can see already there are people gathered on the uh, shores and there's quite a business of, of people making their way out to boats. First thing we saw was a raft actually in, in the water. Look at all these people yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we sort of swung back again and it was like one person, two person, three people, ten people, twenty. It was just just this, the, the sea of, of people. You can see there's absolute chaos here with what looks like hundreds of people trying to get away from here. They're saying that mines have been laid just further on. Everyone in a state of desperation. They're begging us to take them away. He's making me hold the baby's leg very, very thin. They're all very thin, and you can see how desperate they are. People are holding their hands out, begging for help and crying. I really wasn't expecting so many people. I was really stunned that there were so many. 
I thought there might be a few dozen, maybe. They told us that there were a few hundred, and I thought they were wildly exaggerating. There are old people, there are babies. Many of them are talking about being here for over a month. Clearly not had very much to eat at all. A lot of them extremely thin and very frail. And all showing <laughs> extreme signs of desperation. They want help. Yeah, they want help. They want help. They're crying out for help. Come this way. It was so dark and there were no lights anywhere. You had to be really up against people to see them. I could see better than Alex and Neville. Because of the infrared, I was probably the only one that could see. Everyone else was sort of literally groping around in the dark, trying to, you know, watch one footstep. And I've got this sort of fantastic crystal clear view, albeit in this green world. Look at all these children. I think the rest of the team would have picked up the noise, whereas I could physically see this is quite a sizable crowd here, and we'd only just arrived, you know. This lady looks so thin. One of the people I saw was this very, very frail old woman. Look at the state of her hands. Her arms. I was just drawn to her because she was very, very thin. She can hardly walk. And they Careful, go. Wow, her arms. Look at her arms. I can put my entire hand round. Just skin and bone. I mean, completely frail, gaunt. How she was physically able to stand is, is, is still quite surprising. I mean, she was just. There was nothing to her. You'd like to take her to our boat? Yeah. To carry her and yeah, OK, I, I think so. She seems very weak. The state of people, that was absolutely shocking. She is literally falling. OK, have you got her? <laughs> Wait, I, she's holding my hand. OK, don't worry, don't worry. You'll be, can you, Neville, can you tell her she's going to be all right? We all knew we had a very short period of time on the beach, and you had to stick together. Yeah. We were having to hold on to each other so that we wouldn't get separated and get lost in the darkness and in this mass of people. What's she saying? The military has taken her husband away. She's got three little kids, got no money to go anywhere. They were pulling and tugging at us and begging and crying and it was just desperation. Oh, oh my goodness, here's someone else. Oh my goodness, these people are weak. They're incredibly weak. Some of them clearly very sick. They were anxious to show us, look, there's babies, look, there's sick people, look, there's people who've been beaten up, look, we're having to build our own rafts. They were really, really anxious to show us as much as possible. The Burmese military is killing us, they're slaughtering us, they're burning up our homes, and also our women are being raped. So we have to go to save us. They weren't screaming, it was just as if they've been left to their fate. They absolutely have no idea how they're going to get off from this place. And with their hands stretched out, asking for help, it's quite, um, it's quite heartbreaking, I think. How old is this one? Seven days. Yes. Was the baby born here? Yeah, he's been born on the beach. And here's another baby. How old is this one? Seven days. And born here? Yes. Oh my gosh, it's another baby. This is two days. Two days or two days? Two days. No. Oh. Is that the umbilical cord? I can't see. She's still got the umbilical cord attached. Yeah. This is the mother. How old is she? She looks ever so young. Nineteen. Another one. Heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. I think we better take the babies. Can't we? Can't leave the babies. They were pretty much frightened of everything. 
frightened of the soldiers, frightened of the sea, frightened of being left there. It's going to be very difficult to leave here because so many people are begging us to take, take them with us. We created quite a stir because we'd arrived by boat, which meant they could get on that boat and there was suddenly hope for them. They're all just saying they, they have to leave. They feel they're going to die here unless someone comes and helps them. And this is the result of what the UN calls a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. They have been pushed into this position simply because they're Rohingya Muslims. I think they all felt that we had come to rescue all of them, but unfortunately that was not going to be the case. We could only have a limited number on the boat itself. Let's take this little one here. Look how thin she is. There are seven people in the family. Lordy. Can we squeeze them all? Seven adults. Seven adults you can't squeeze. For us to be choosing who would live or who would die was a, was a really hard a terrible choice, but whoever we felt the most vulnerable, like the newborns and the old, was a difficult choice, but there was no other choice, I think. No, but I think things are getting a little bit out of control. Okay, okay, okay we're being told to leave now. Never wait, don't go too fast. What's he saying? Come on. We have to go. Watch this little girl over here. Come. Careful of the waves. Suddenly on the boat, everyone went quiet. There was just so many emotions going on, you know, that little boat as it sort of made its way slowly back up the coast. Everyone was exhausted. They were very hungry and the crew was handing out biscuits and water. They were looking like they'd been through some awful, long nightmare. It was an incredibly difficult story for all the journalists to cover because they weren't being allowed access to the areas where all the accusations were coming from. Although there was this tide of people coming over, you had to take their word for everything they said and this allowed the Myanmar authorities to deny a lot of it and just say, well, these people are lying, they're making it up, it didn't happen. The Burmese military and its government is lying to the world. This was evidence of what is actually happening to these people. The whole thing about fake news being put out by the rest of the media and everything was made up was actually untrue. The most important thing a journalist team can do is to go and get that evidence, provide it right in front of them and say, right, try and deny that. 